definitely in recovery mode. Um, last year, I lost my dad and was diagnosed with cancer within three weeks of each other. And so that was um, kind of the definition of traumatic experience, too much, too fast, as they say. Um, spent a lot of last year in fight or flight mode and I'm just picking up the pieces and starting to really feel like myself again um, and really putting you know a lot of like tools that I've kind of picked up along the way to work and really finally kind of feeling a little more whole. I have a lot of rituals. Mental health is extremely important to me and I'm very happy that you are doing what you're doing. Um, I do a journaling process that I learned at Hoffman. It's called a quadrinity check and they basically divide your body or yourself into body, intellect, emotion, and spirit. And every morning I check in with all four pieces of myself. They're all equal, um, which is something I remind myself of and basically say, you know, how does my body feel? Is it tense? Where? Why? And then um, I say, thank you, body, or whatever part it is. And then I write needs. And then it's very quickly, what does it need? And that is how I start my day most of the time. And I love doing that. Um, I meditate a lot. I have done that for a long time. And then something I'm working on is I would really like to take more pauses between my speech. I think even now I'm thinking, oh, they have things to do. I don't want to take too much of their time. I think that at work a lot, you know, maybe it's a New York thing. I don't know, but um, I'm working on that where I want to really like give my words and thoughts time and I want to give other people's words and thoughts time so that I can actually think about it and digest it and then respond thoughtfully. Surfing is, it is so meditative for me. Similar in a lot of ways to painting. Um, I love getting out into the water. I love that first glide of the board when you get, you know, when you've walked a little bit and then you get on the board and glide out. That's like one of the best feelings to me. I love nature. I'm, you know, I, I didn't mention it before, but I do forest bathing sometimes too, which I think is incredible. And the studies that they've done on it is amazing. Forest bathing and surfing are so similar to me where you can just see dolphins or, you know, a little sea lion will come bark at you or, you know, just being around all of these creatures, it's such a good reminder that we're all together. We're all in the same ecosystem. Nothing is bigger or smaller than the other. Um, I think, you know, it definitely connects me to my dad too, because he surfed and I, I loved talking to him about it. You know, he had dementia, but the thing that he always remembered was my surfing. And so we could hold a conversation months at a time about, you know, where I was surfing, where I was going, if I went to camp, he would give me tips. It was really incredible. So I think a lot about how, how powerful it was that it stayed with him. And I understand that it's doing the same thing to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think surfing, and you know if you do it, it's like the act of surfing is one thing, but there's another piece of it with the people you're there with. It does feel like one of the last places where people say hello, people acknowledge each other. Um, it's somewhat social even if you're there alone. And, you know, I like that reminder that kind of we're all, we're all in this together and, you know, if you're struggling, I'll come help you and vice versa, that sort of thing. It's definitely new for me. I waited a month after my dad died to tell you know everyone but maybe two friends. And um, I waited three months after my cancer diagnosis to tell people. In my head, I wasn't gonna tell anyone. I was just gonna get through it and it was a pandemic and you know, it, I was just gonna have done it and not talk about it. Um, and then it, it just got more and more involved and it got to where I was kind of avoiding people I knew when they would come to LA because I was bald and I was just like, this is crazy. Like I should just be open about it and talk about it. Um, it was really scary to open up about it. My heart was racing. I had to actually turn my phone off after, even though I got a lot of supportive messages, it was just really overwhelming. 
I am definitely someone who likes to be there for other people and I like to take care of others. And so for me, last year was a huge lesson in opening up to people and asking for help and being vulnerable in that way, um, which is just not, has never been something that I would, I've done before. So it was, it was definitely a learning experience. It was something I had to take, you know, one step at a time, but I, it certainly wasn't something that I was used to. And I, I still kind of feel weird about it because, you know, there's a piece that's like I'm being vulnerable, but then, you know, I'm a little bit of a, you know, I, w I wouldn't say people pleaser, but I do, it's really important to me that other people, you know, are having a good time and that I'm being conscious of the energy I'm bringing into rooms. And for me to, you know, share two things that were really devastating on the one hand, I kind of needed people to see that I was going through it, but on the other hand, I felt guilty because I didn't, I didn't want to upset anyone with that news. And so it was definitely a lot of, you know, give and take and learning for me. After the initial shock, it was definitely good to have it out because then I could actually talk to people about it more openly. Um, and there wasn't so much backtracking I had to do, whereas you know, with chemo, you kind of go through these layers of learning about things. I mean, I almost feel like I could be a doctor at this point because of how much I've learned and how much research I've done. And so it's almost like I, at that point, I could finally kind of talk to people about it and they kind of had a little bit of the background and I did put it on Instagram so I didn't have to tell a bunch of people, which was really nice. Um, and so, it, you know, it was, it was good. I still, even today, I, I feel a little weird about it, but it is really nice to be able to talk about it with people. And, you know, I'm a human and as much as I want other people to have a good time, I also know I, you know, I have my own way of talking about things and I think I'm a gentle person. And so I'm, you know, I'm definitely glad that people know. And um, I don't know if I would use the word cathartic, but I would definitely say it was nice to, to have it out there. Well, first of all, thank you for asking because I don't really feel, I feel like with all of this, you know, I haven't, it sounds really stupid and vain, but there hasn't necessarily been space for me to like care about hair, even though I do. Um, obviously with a cancer diagnosis, you know, having your body be healthy and going through chemo, you know, I was very happy to have access to those drugs, to have access to those doctors. Every time I went into chemo, I had kind of a, a ritual where I would say, thank you chemo. And you know, thank you for this medicine. This is good. This is helping me. And so even as I lost my hair, I thought about that too. This is the medicine working. And I always tried to frame it that way. But at the same time, you know, you can feel two things at once. I can feel grateful for chemo and sad that I lost my hair. I had long blonde hair my whole life. It was really strange um, to have it fall out. And there's not, you know, a lot of space for that in the world for some reason to kind of care about the vein stuff or the, the physical stuff when there's more intense stuff going on. So thank you for asking. But um, it, it was really strange. I felt, um, especially when nobody knew, I felt like I was disappearing. You know, my nails were falling off, my hair fell out, my eyelashes, my eyebrows fell off. It really felt like all the things that, you know, I felt like were a part of me. I just looked in the mirror and I thought, I have no idea who I am. And that was the weird part, was not recognizing myself. And then also watching these physical pieces of myself fall off. It just felt like, you know, like a movie. Taking the pictures it, it felt different every day, and that was kind of interesting. Um, I'm so glad that I documented it because at the time, everything feels like it's been forever. It feels like, oh my gosh, I've, had, I've been going radiation every day for two months. It feels like a lot. And now that I look back, it was such a whirlwind. That I'm so, I almost wish I had more pictures of myself bald. And you know, it's so easy on your iPhone to delete pictures if you don't like them. And, I, I didn't like a lot of pictures that I took on my iPhone, but I'm less tempted to throw a Polaroid away. And so I did save those pictures and I'm really glad that I have them now because I can look back and be really proud of how far I came and oh my gosh, I went through that and that was so weird and it kind of does jog those memories. Um, and during chemo, you know, 
my memory at least was really impacted and so I do forget what that was like and when I see the pictures it's it's good um, to remember but every time I took the picture it was different some days I stood you know crying and luckily you don't really tell that much detail in Polaroids but sometimes I was really upset and I kind of wanted to document being upset or I felt alone and I wanted to document what that felt like sometimes I felt like my buzz cut look, kind of looked cool and I wanted to take a picture of it. Sometimes I had a wig on and you know, there were times when I would just dress up for nothing because I felt good enough to and I would document that. And so, you know, when I look back at the pictures, I see all of that as well. I see the intent of the picture. I see how I felt. I see that time. Um, luckily, a lot of them I've written on the back, you know, when it was, but it was, it was definitely, you know, a big piece of it was documenting it for me and kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, just for myself, kind of, you know, versus people seeing it was really nice after having a job where I was kind of forward facing a lot and my appearance was, you know, sold in ads for Teen Vogue or whatever, you know, and now it's like, these were just for me of this very like personal experience I was having. I definitely worked a lot on shame at Hoffman, that was very helpful for me. Um, I think stigma, you know, before and during all of this, there's definitely a stigma around taking medication. Um, and I certainly feel that, you know, I feel, I took uh, antidepressants many years ago. I almost didn't. And, you know, because of the stigma and I think I'm so glad that I did because I think it was life-saving for me and you know I think again in my current situation I didn't want to take more pills because I take so many pills already and I'm you know kind of just sick of doctors at this point but you know I actually really did need to take a little something and I'm really glad that I do but at the same time I feel a little ashamed that you know, oh, I wasn't strong enough. Especially people talk about cancer survivors being so strong and it's like, oh, I can't, I couldn't do it in a way. Even though I don't feel that way, I would never say that to a friend. I would never feel that about a friend. For some reason, it's really stigmatized in our society and I don't know why. I mean, I feel like they both feed into each other for me. Um, my partner is totally like, the yin to my yang, I mean, we were totally different. He is hysterical and greatly helps my mental health. I mean, the darkest days of my life, he's been there making fun of me and it makes me laugh. And like, I love that and think it's hilarious. It's so not how I act on his darkest day, which is, you know, kind of like the beauty of our relationship. I definitely think, um, you know, he helps me to kind of stay grounded. He helps me, he knows when I'm having a pity party when I don't need to. He knows when I really don't feel good and I need a little extra hug. Um, but it's also, you know, I notice when my mental health is suffering, when I'm not taking care of myself, I notice that my relationships and my friendships tend to kind of fall apart a little bit more. And so it really is this kind of cycle that feeds itself and motivates me to really take care and you know do that mental health hygiene check all the time. Painting. When I get a Slack notification. <laughs> Long hugs. I think that I'm gentle. Always, but with reservation.